for the Abrams Boxing Show, powered by Last Out Media and brought to you by www.15rounds.com, the worldwide leader in boxing news. Also, Abrams Boxing PR Media and Broadcasting, the industry standard for boxing media relations and play-by-play broadcasting. Also, check out www.abramsboxing.com, Abrams Boxing on YouTube, as well as M. Abrams Boxing on Twitter and Mark Abrams Boxing on Instagram. Good week to everyone, all the boxing fans around the world. I'm Mark Ames, and welcome to another edition of the Abrams Boxing Show. Uh, we have a packed lineup this week. we got the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius and Shannon Briggs, who I spoke to at the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame. And go to Abrams Boxing on YouTube. There will be about 30 interviews with some of the legendary figures of the sport that I did over the weekend with uh, at the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame. So let's get to all the reviews, previews, and news of the week. We, like I said, we have a loaded uh, show this week. Last Saturday night, the Dignity Health Sports Pavilion in Carson, California, the six foot six inch Sebastian Fondora uh, retained his WBC interim super welterweight championship with a 12 round unanimous decision over Carlos Ocampo. Scores were 119, 109, 118, 110, and 117, 111 for Fondora, who's now 20 0 and 1. Ocampo, uh, Drops to 34 and two. Uh, you know, good effort by, uh, Fondora. Did, did a nice job. You know, we, everyone expecting a, a vicious, uh, knockout like, uh, you know, the, the fight against, uh, Erickson Lubin, you know, uh, but didn't happen, but Fondora looked good. He wants Jermel Charlo. We'll see if that fight materializes sometime in the spring. In the co-feature, Carlos Adam has captured the WBC, uh, interim, uh, middleweight championship. With an emphatic third round knockout over Juan Macias Montiel. Uh, Adamus now 22 and 1, 17 knockouts. Montiel now 23, 6 and 2. Good uh, effort by Adamus, who's actually one of my favorite fighters to watch. Just uh, he's a real exciting fighter. 22 and 1 now with 17 knockouts. The opening bout on the Showtime Championship boxing card, IBF Jr. Bantamweight champion Fernando Martinez. Retained his title with his second consecutive victory over former champion German on Cajas. Scores were 119-109 and 118-110 twice for Fernando Martinez, who, uh, uh, you know, he just, he just outworked him, especially over the last six, seven rounds. Uh, he, he definitely won the whole second half of the fight. Uh, Fernando Martinez becoming one of those, you know, pretty uh, good, fr- uh, friendly uh, for television viewing audiences as he throws a lot of punches. Before the Showtime Championship boxing uh, card got going, Showtime uh, showed a few prelim bouts on their YouTube channel, uh, and we saw Igis Kavaliskis, the former welterweight world title challenger, winning a unanimous decision over Michael Fox. Kavaliskis now 23-2-1. Fox drops to 22-3. and uh, Edward Vasquez, our guest on last week's show, uh, won a eight-round split decision over Victor Slavinsky. Vasquez now 13 and 1, Slavinsky 13, 2 and 1. Scores are 79, 73 and 77, 75 for Vasquez, 78, 74. I don't know what that judge is watching for Slavinsky. Also uh, kicking off the uh, social media, YouTube portion of the card, Gabriella Fondor, the sister of uh, Sebastian, she uh, remained undefeated. She's now 9 and 0 as she won a 10 round unanimous decision over Naomi Reyes. Uh, scores are 98. 92 and 99 91 twice for Gabriella Gabriella Fondor, the 20 year old sister of the WBC super welterweight interim champion Sebastian Fondora. A lot of stuff going on this week. You know, like I said, we only looked at one card from last week. There are four or five major cards this week, and we're going to go through all of them really quickly. Uh, Saturday in Brooklyn on Fox Pay Per View, payperview.com, Deontay Wilder, 42 2 and 1. Takes on Robert Hellenius, 31 and 3 in the heavyweight main event. We'll d- take a deeper dive into that fight in a moment. Caleb Plant, 21 and 1, takes on Anthony Durrell, 34 2 and 2, in a battle of former super middleweight world champions, that being the co feature. Gary Antonio Russell, 19 and 0, takes on Emmanuel Rodriguez, 20 and 2. That's a rematch of a fight uh, that was aborted uh, about a year ago where uh, there was a headbutt uh, very early in the fight. And uh, 
They will be getting on again. And kicking off the pay-per-view will be Frank Sanchez, 20-0, battling Carlos Negron, 25-3. Battle of uh, uh, big heavyweights, Negron, a big puncher. Sanchez from Cuba, a real good boxer, real good boxer puncher. As we mentioned, the main event will be Wilder and Hellenius. And I'll give my prediction afterwards. But I had a chance to talk to the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius, earlier this week. And we talked about this very important fight. And this is how it sounded. Now joining me on the line is a man who next uh, Saturday night, October 15th, will take on Deontay Wilder in the main event of a big pay-per-view card live from Barclays Center. Heavyweight, Robert Hellenius. Hey, Robert, how you doing? Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. So we're as we tape this, we're about a week out from this big fight Saturday night, October fifteenth. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty tired because all the heavy heavy work is now behind me. Now it's uh, starting with uh, just some light upkeeping training and and keeping it sharp. Deontay Wilder obviously coming off the two big losses uh, to Tyson Fury. Uh, how important is it for you in this fight because he's coming off two knockout losses, especially the second one being a real brutal one, to land something early, the first first you know couple rounds uh, to to test uh, you know his chin because obviously a lot of times when guys get knocked out like that they seem to be never the same. Is there, is it important for you to get something big in the first couple rounds on him? Well, you know, I'm I, I'm pretty fast starter, so so of course we're gonna test out, test out each other. Uh, he, I don't I don't uh, think in those terms that that he's gonna be uh, somehow bad in this fight or or anything like that. I think he's he's a great boxer, so so I I need to be, keep my full hundred percent concentration and and do everything in my power to to to, to win this fight. De- Deontay Wilder, obviously a big name opponent, the former WBC heavyweight champion. At this point in your career, um, I know you know maybe five, six years ago you were one of the guys, or maybe the guy who was supposed to be maybe the the uh, the future of the heavyweight division. You suffered a couple losses in, in the meantime. Do you feel like some pressure has been lifted off you a little bit, meaning like uh, maybe you're being taken for granted a little bit, the expectations maybe aren't what they used to be uh, for you? Well, well, that's that's good for me, though. That gives me an edge because they know my personal life and what I'm going through and, and stuff like that. So so for me, it's it's good to take me for granted. And uh, that's why I like to be that like being the underdog as well, you know, because uh, I can only improve. What's been the difference, especially the last couple of fights against Kunaki? Um, what's been the difference in those fights rather than the couple of fights that uh, you didn't get your hand raised? Well, uh, the, the difference was that uh, I have been now gotten uh, many years of no injury training and, and uh, not being sick in a fight. So I think that's the main main reason why they fight the fight went so good. You had a you've had a couple of fights now in the United States, and I believe the first fight against Kanaki was at Barclays Center. Uh, yeah. Does that give you some uh, some being a little bit comfortable, being that you've been been in this arena? Been, I mean, in fact, the Kanaki is a, is a New York guy. You actually beat mm-hmm. the hometown guy in New York. You, 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 does that give you some uh, like a bit of being comfortable coming back to Barclays Center? Yeah, I don't really care where I fight because uh, I've been fighting all all around the world. Uh, even as an amateur, we were when I was 18, we were fighting in Cuba, you know, Russia, China. We have been fighting everywhere in the world and and in different arenas. So, so uh, I, I try to focus on the fight, not where I fight. What do you make? And um, I would imagine you've probably seen stuff on social media. Deontay Wilder's actually been given his uh, sparring round count. I guess he's sparred about 400 rounds or something right now. I don't know if you've seen any of that on social media. I, I'm sorry, I'm not on social media. I have uh, people uh, keep, keep maintaining my page on, on that front. I, I don't, I don't really follow news or or social media. Uh, so the fact I have, I have enough to follow this head, you know. <laughs> the fact that he's like sparred a, a real a lot of rounds. What does that tell you anything about what what his mindset is going into the fight? Well, that, that uh, probably means that he's he's uh, for real and uh, trying to to come and win this fight like me. 
I, I don't remember how many many hundreds of rounds of fights, but like uh, sparring this this training camp. But we had a five week sparring camp now, so <laughs> so we we also ready. Obviously, this is an elimination bout. Uh, uh, that means the winner of this fight gets the gets the big fish, uh, the big world title shot. Uh, I know you're not looking past this fight. Obviously, with a big punch like Wilder, it's definitely can't look past this fight. But do you see, obviously, your dreams and your goals now within reach? Yes, yes. And that's why I'm still in the game. Uh, I, I promised my Finnish fans to, to bring the belt home, so and uh, I'm doing everything in my power to do that and keep my promise. What's it mean to you? Obviously, you, you also represent an area, the, the, the Nordic region, uh, to be headlining a big pay-per-view in the United States. Well, it, it feels great, of course, you know, uh, such a small country and many, many good athletes. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, because of your success, you feel that you have inspired maybe a lot of young fighters there to uh, not only become fighters, but, but say, hey, you know what, it, it, it's, everything's possible. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. I hope to inspire many more uh, heavyweights in in Finland to 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 pick up the gloves and and start boxing. A um, couple last questions. What do you want to say to the fans in closing before we see you Saturday night, October fifteenth, live at Barclays Center, Fox uh, Pay Per View, PBC on Fox Pay Per View. Well, tune in to the fight because it's going to be spectacular. And, you know, there can be only one winner, and it's this. Do you, do you think uh, two guys, six foot seven, a, a knockout one way or the other, you feel that's what the result's going to be? I think so, yeah. There you have it. Thank you, Robert, for a few minutes of your time. We wish you best of luck, and we'll talk to you Thank along you. the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you have it, Robert Hellenius, who uh, takes on Deontay Wilder. I like Wilder. I think I think there's be some b- big punches landed by both guys. I think it's be one of those kind of slow but slugfest kind of fights. It's gonna be entertaining. Got Wilder by TKO in round nine. That's uh, my prediction. A couple other predictions on the card. I'll take Caleb Plant by uh, the unanimous decision over Anthony Durrell. Gary Russell probably boxes his way to a unanimous decision over Emmanuel Rodriguez. And I'll take Frank Sanchez by mid round stoppage over Carlos Negron. Saturday in Australia on ESPN, Devin Haney, 28-0, takes on George Cambosos Jr. for the undisputed lightweight title, a rematch of the fight from a few months ago. The Haney won pretty easily, and um, I expect this fight to be even easier for Devin Haney. He's got his father in Australia with him the whole time. All he's doing now is focusing on the fight. He's got the skills that pay the bills in this one. Got to go with Devin Haney over George Cambosos Jr. Uh, this Saturday night. Also Saturday, uh, the on on WatchBoxing.tv, the Gloves Up, Guns Down will be airing at 5 p.m. Eastern time. The main event will be DeMichael Harris versus Donovan Estrella. Uh, so it's uh, on this uh, WatchBoxing.tv. You'll see uh, that great event. Big card uh, uh, that will be a stream live uh, and for free on uh, this uh, watchboxing.tv. Saturday and uh, live on ESPN Plus, Clarissa Shields. 12 0 meets Savannah Marshall. Also 12 0 for the Undisputed Middleweight Championship. This fight will headline a card that was postponed a few weeks by the unfortunate hit passing of Queen Elizabeth in England. The fight's in London, so, uh, you know, they they shut the country down for a couple of days. Just happened to be the weekend of this great uh, fee, all-female card. Also, Michaela Mayer, uh, 17-0, takes on Alicia Baumgartner, 12-0, for the IBF, WBC, WBO junior lightweight titles. Great, again, I mean, just, just a, a great afternoon, evening of boxing. And you want to get up at 4 a.m. in Eastern time, which I think that's I, I think that's when it starts. It's, I think it's very early in the morning. Go, st- go back to Australia. Matchroom boxing will have uh, Liam Perro 22 0, take on Brock Jarvis 20 0. Also, heavyweights Dempsey McKean and Sky Nicholson <clears throat> will be in action on this card. A couple news items this week. Saturday, uh, last Saturday's the zone clash between Chris Eubank Jr. and Connor Ben. I'm, I'm obviously, unfortunately, it did not happen. Connor Ben t- tested positive for a banned substance. And uh, there was a, you know, the, whether it was the fight going to go on, was it get off? It was on, it was off. Finally, uh, about a day before the fight, um, 
after uh, the, the BBC pulled the plug on the fight, uh, the BB of C, uh, with Ben testing positive for a trace amount of a banned woman's fertility drug. Uh, some other news items. Uh, let's see here. The main event uh, of a October 21st fight in Orlando will pit Frank Diaz, number uh, 9-1, and one, take on Oscar Bravo, 25-10. and 10. Alexis Rocha uh, will be added to the October 29th uh, card that will feature Joseph Diaz and William Zapata. Uh, Rocha will take on Jesus Perez at 24 and 3, 18 knockouts. It's a 10 round co feature fight. Uh, Robesi Ramirez was supposed to fight Jesse Magdaleno on October 29th in the Hulu Theater Madison Square Garden. Magdaleno is now out with an injury. A couple other news items here. Uh, uh, added to the Jake Paul Anderson Silva fight will be a fight between former NFL running back Le'Veon Bell taking on former UFC MMA fighter Uriah Hall. That will be at 195 pounds on October 29th on Showtime pay per view. Isaiah Steen will now take on Cena Becco in the main event of a Showbox the New Generation card on October 21st at Bally's in <clears throat> Atlantic City. The original opponent, um, original main event, Ali. Asmalov had to drew had to withdraw due to COVID. His fight against Hot Rod Kalayevic. Jose Zapata will thirty five and two twenty seven knockouts will take on Regis Progress twenty seven one twenty three knockouts for the vacant WBC Super Lightweight Championship November twenty six at the Dignity House Sports Park in Carson California. That fight will be a pay per view fight. Former um, world title challenger Derek Chisora looks like he may be. In line to fight Tyson Fury on December 3rd. Uh, also, a couple fights this weekend. Tony Jetter has a card on at the Maryland Live uh, uh, Hotel Casino in Hanover, Maryland. Great card. Elijah P- Pierce versus Darren Williams. Also in Chicago, uh, great super middleweight doubleheader uh, that will be live on BXNG TV on Saturday night. Bobby Hits of Hits Boxing. Earlier this week, I had a chance to talk to Shannon Briggs at the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame, and uh, we had a nice sit down, and uh, this is how it went. Live at the Atlantic City Boxing Now, Now join me here live at the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame. One second here. Now is there- now join me here live at the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame as the former heavyweight champion of the world. I'm saying that a lot today. Two-time uh, heavyweight champion. Two-time heavyweight champion of the world, Shannon Briggs. How you doing? I'm good, champ. How about yourself? Doing great. Good doing you, doing, doing great. So what's it like being being back here? You see, well, I don't want, like I said, the thing is I don't like seeing old guys. That, mean, that means I'm calling you old, too. Oh, snap. <laughs> nah, it's been amazing to be here. I'm fanning out, man. All these great champions here. Michael Spinks. Uh, Tim Witherspoon. Pickling Thomas. Montel Griffin, so many champions here, man. I'm, I'm fanning out big time. Obviously, the, the division that, that, quote, runs the sport, that weight division, you mentioned you, former two-time heavyweight champ. James Tony was the champion for, Ooh, for, James for, Tony for, in the for, house. for, Let's for, go for a couple minutes. Michael Spinks, Pinklin Thomas, Tim Witherspoon. Uh, Larry Holmes may be around this weekend. Ooh. Lots of lots of heavyweight champions here. Really? Yeah, that'd be crazy to see Larry Holmes. But, yeah, a lot of champions here. It's a great event. A lot of people, fans turned out. I'm, I'm shocked, man. I mean, not shocked. I'm just having fun. It's better than I thought. So um, uh, I had a few people come down from New York and New Jersey for the day. And uh, it's going to be First time here at the Lang City Hall of Fame, right? Excuse me? Your first time here at the Lang City Hall of yes, Fame. Sir. Yes, sir. You had many great moments and many great fights here in Atlantic City. What sticks out when, when I say uh, Shannon Briggs fight in Atlantic City? Well, what sticks out to me? What sticks out in your mind? <laughs> Uh, when I'm out for a foreman here, Lennox Lewis here. Uh, I, I had a lot of fights here coming up as a youngster, building my career here in Florida. So, uh, I'm excuse me, here in Jersey. So, uh, it's been great, man. It's been great. What, uh, Lang City was such a vibrant fight town. I know they're trying to make it make it happen again here. I mean, I, like you said, it meant so much to you in your career. How much of it would it be a shot in the arm to the boxing community to get Lang City up and running again? It'd be great to get it going, man. It'd be great to, I'd love to be a part of it, to be honest with you, because, like I said, my career was built and it started here, so I'd love to be a part of something like that. I apologize. I was waiting for the mic. Let's go, champ. But, yeah, uh, it'd be great for Atlantic City. I'd, I'd love to be a part of it because 
this is the place to box it, man. We know Atlantic City. We had some big fights here. Mike Tyson. Oh, man, so many big fights came out of Atlantic City, and uh, we want to bring that back, man. I want to be a part of it. What, um, just uh, going today, I mean, you never officially announced your retirement, have you? Yeah, I'm not going to never retire. <laughs> I'm gonna fight forever. Yeah, I mean, do you still hope for one more, one more big fight? Yeah, I want a big fight. I want to fight somebody big, you know. You know, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones and Holyfield and all these guys did these comebacks, and they, you know, they got paid. And you know, what I mean, I, I could, I could beat all of them at the same time. They could, they could jump me, and I could beat them all. So why can't I get a fight? Oh, that's why I can't get a fight because they can't. They scared. Who uh, of the quote younger generation of heavyweights? Uh, yeah, man. Who, 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 who do you? I mean, who? who uh, are you a Fury guy? What look how old about? I am. Look at all this gray hair. Look, <laughs> look how old I am. Guy like Fury and Usyk. Uh, you, you follow that? And uh, who do you like out those two? Uh, I like I like Fury in that. You know, I never count this guy out. What's his name? Uh, Usyk, but I like Fury. How would you fight a guy six foot nine like Fury? Say that again. How would Shannon Briggs fight a six foot nine inch guy like Tyson Fury? Oh, I'm taking it to him. I'm banging him. I'm banging it close, and and I can box and step apart, step back, and you know you gotta know how to fight a guy that can box. You gotta get funky with him. You gotta have that rhythm. Well, that what, cook. It's what do you cook? I told you I wouldn't keep you too long. What do you want to say to the fans besides "Let's go, champ"? Ooh, you beat me to it. <laughs> I just want to say have a great day. Uh, drink some water. <laughs> Drink water is the best thing for you, man. Uh, don't dehydrate. Uh, stay away from the sugar. Uh, don't watch too much negativity on TV. Don't listen to negative music today. Make it a positive day. Do some exercise. Go for a walk. And if you ever feel down now, you feel like quitting, say, let's go, champ. I actually have w w one other question just came to mind. Sure. When you're doing the, the chasing Vladimir around Florida videos, how did you it? How did you know where he was all the time? I had a little bird. <laughs> you know, I got magic powers. Besides that, you know, I had a little bird. He used to fly to me and tell me, champ, you over there. Do, 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 you like, do you like the thing in the restaurant or do you like the thing on the water better when, when you, you follow him on the jet ski? Uh, well, in the restaurant, they jumped me. So it wasn't me. It was him. He had bodyguards. So, But in the water, I got him because uh, he was by himself. That so, was... To, to this day, probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Let's go, Chad. Shannon Briggs, thank you for a few minutes. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Cheers. Thank you. There you have it, Shannon Briggs. Uh, very entertaining. So, like I said, turn Abrams Boxing on YouTube. You'll see so many great videos. I'm putting them up three, four, five a, a day. I did about 30. James Tony, Pinkland Thomas. Here you see Shannon Briggs, uh, Dave Tiberi just went up. I'm just trying to think who, who else. There's just so, so many guys, Kelly Pavlik. So uh, Kendall Holt, former world champion. So a lot of great videos. Again, this week, uh, uh, some great stream, streams on watchboxing.tv, Saturday, 5 p.m., uh, South Paul Promotions. Also on BXNG TV, Saturday night, I'll be broadcasting live in Chicago. So I, everyone should watch all these great fights. Loaded weekend. Saturday is one of those days that if you don't have to, don't get out of your, don't get off your couch or get out of your chair. You know, get some good food and enjoy a, a whole day of professional boxing. So we will talk to you and review all those fights next week. Preview everything going on on uh, next week.